she has worked in schools in India catering to both national and international curriculums. So today both of them will speak about the important and much discussed subject of critical and creative thinking in design. They will highlight the main elements of effective critical and creative thinking and will emphasize on how these can be developed and used. We thank you all again for joining this session and hope that you will find it informative and useful in your own practices. It's all over to you now, Ms. Delia and Ms. Divya. Take on the session. Let's go for a ride. But before that, I'll just request everybody that uh, let's do the maximum learning today. Let's have a lot of exchanges today. We all are educators and we need to grow with each other, right? So that, that's the best quality of virtually connecting from every corner of this world on this platform. So let's utilize it to our best and let's be active. Don't go with these speakers, whatever they say, we are using word cloud, whatever be you keep sharing your thoughts with microphone. Chat box is always open to you. I'm there to support you. I'll be there and sharing your thoughts with them. OK, so just pitch in over to you, Ms. Delia. Once again, uh, a very good evening, afternoon, perhaps even morning for some of you. I'm very happy uh, to see so many wonderful people join us today, and we will try to make this session as informative and as effective. Those of you who maybe have uh, visited my previous session know that I rebel against what I like to call abstract seminars. I like it when the audience, the participants, the speakers actually have a meaningful conversation conversation and manage to take away some interesting, valuable, effective insights. So uh, I hope that's what we're going to do today. I, I hope that you're going to find this effective. And before I pass the word to Ms. Divya for a small introduction, I also wanted to say thank you for supporting our new uh, initiative, which is the Center for Teaching Excellence by the Genesis Global School. Uh, we are looking into making this a wonderful tradition, annual tradition, and of course, currently we are limited to this uh, online mode, but we are seriously thinking of having whole day week sessions where you can actually come into the school and interact with us because of course an hour an hour and a half is good to start a conversation but when we see so many subject teachers and professionals in one room i believe it's much more effective to host it as a whole day uh, professional development seminar so uh over to you miss divya Thank you, Ms. Dahlia. Uh, so today, uh, as all of you know, first of all, a very warm welcome to all of you for joining our session developing critical and creative thinking in design. Today we are thrilled to talk about our domain that is design and technology as it is widens our horizons of mind and let our imagination come live. So I hope that all of you are going to enjoy our session and you will uh, work with us, share your ideas and uh, participate a lot. So uh, let's continue with the objective of the today's session. Wonderful. I'm sharing my screen, Ms. Divya. Yes. And let us indeed start with the objective of today's saturated session. So let's start with the objective of today's session. By the end of this session, you will be able to investigate the four aspects of critical and creative thinking. Uh, second, you will learn effective strategies that you can then apply to foster both critical and creative thinking skills in connections to the MYP design cycle. And when we say learn effective strategies, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showcasing a little bit of theory and how we implement that in our practice. Understand how you can combine approaches from both critical and creative thinking skills to enrich and deepen the teaching and learning experiences. So and here, last, yes, please, please. Ms. Yes, yes ma'am, please. And last but not least, what we're going to do is we're going to share some tips uh, from our professional life on how to establish an engaging environment in your design classes. And if you will have any questions regarding something extremely specific, uh, Ms. Divya and I will be very, very happy to share our thoughts on the subject and contribute to your teaching strategies. Moving ahead, I would like to quote a famous saying by Albert Einstein. 
I never teach my students. I only attempt to provide conditions in which they can learn. I can I think that this is the best quote for our subject design and technology as it as it leads to the condition and condition leads to the probabilities. Probabilities further leads to research and analysis, which finally leads to a better outcome. Absolutely, I agree, Ms. Divya, and we are going to be speaking and proving this point several times throughout this session. But before we actually start speaking about what we think on the subject, we would like you to engage in our very first warm up activity, uh, which is generating a word cloud. So what we're going to ask you to do is we're going to ask you to think of a word that best describes the current classroom environment in your class in any design class that you have or maybe share a concept which in your opinion can be the key feature and which is essential and vital for an effective engaging learning atmosphere once again an engaging classroom environment you can either scan the qr code which you see on your screen or follow the link which is now provided by Ms. Lino uh, in the chat box, whichever way is comfortable. And as you um, press the link or follow the QR code, you will be redirected to a Poll Everywhere site where you can insert your thoughts. And we will happily be witnessing this real-time generation of the world cloud together. So once again, to reiterate, Think of a word that describes your current classroom environment best of all, or a key concept, a vital point, which in your opinion contributes to the creation and formulation of an effective, engaging learning atmosphere. So true. Let us start. So it's all Let to, us... uh, yours, yeah. We can have the word cloud, and those who are not in a position to play on a word cloud, why not share your thoughts? So you can even raise your hands, you can write in the chat box. It's all up to you, the way you want to communicate, right? So we are all open to hear to any of your forms, through any of your forms of your suggestions. Yeah, the links are provided in the chat box too. So you can just take up from there. It's a very comfortable interface. OK, we have our first Started getting creativeness. Words. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Collaborative is also there. Collaborative, very nice. Absolutely. And of course, those of you who um, attend IB seminars or IB related seminars know that probably collaboration has become the word of the past five years in everything from um, management and leadership to classroom discussions to student interactions to ATL skills. Absolutely correct. Any more ideas, suggestions apart from collaborative, creativeness okay brainstorm. brainstorm so Wonderful. i really like this concept of the brainstorm in which we brainstorm multiple ideas and come up with a solution great so Absolutely. so many so many responses are coming here open uh, Ms. Divya, also just to uh, make a point here please don't be afraid to um repeat a certain concept because apart from just sharing these thoughts the main idea or one of the main ideas of this word cloud is of course to see what are the general trends and tendencies so we see now that brainstorm is quite big and heavy in our screen it's wonderful to see that so many people agree but then so many different ideas am i right miss divya are now being expressed yes, yes. ma'am I yeah, believe brainstorm have been taken attention by many of them, right? So exactly. many of them go with it. Yeah, it's great. Good to have but, that. But still a, a couple of really, really valuable things. Ownership, exploration, innovative, inquisitiveness, technology, differently, ideas, open minded, so research, yeah. differently, differently. So thank you. Ownership for sharing. is a very good thing, uh, Delia, if you see. Uh, it's very Absolutely. important to have that ownership, though, you know, to take the onus off. Yes, that's good. 
the responsible and behavior, yes. We now see that some uh, colleagues are also stressing the importance once again of innovative class, absolutely uh, finding new ideas. And I believe that the general process of learning is innovative when you, you know, really think about that. Uh, well, you can continue forming this word cloud and we will gladly return to it at the end of this session. So feel free to uh, just join in and pitch your ideas uh, and we are moving forward. So now let's come and share your thoughts regarding critical and creative thinking. So in your opinion, what are the key features of critical and creative thinker? What do they have in common and what are their differences? Please raise your hand in teams to answer or type your answer to the chat box. So you are free to raise your hand as well as you can write your answers in the chat box. And while we're waiting for our participants to join in and share their ideas, uh, I would like to explain the reason we're starting with this um, heavy activities and saturated activities and wanting to see your opinion on things, because it's important for us to tune in to this mood of discussion, because further on we'll be discussing some complex concepts. So it's good to sort of establish the frames of our discussion and see what are the perspectives perspective sorry and points of views of you our dear participants we have so already started are... getting some uh, points delia in the okay. chat box we have sure. from vishnu curiosity uh, rohan says it's creative thinkers is going beyond the limitations uh, gracie is saying it's innovation so good good keeping up and uh, we'll just uh, yeah Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Uh, I agree with every single one of them. I can't even really single out um, one specific one. Um, any more thoughts, ideas, maybe what somebody would like to raise their hands and share the thoughts? Yeah, that will be great. We also have from uh, uh, Vera, Vera over there that it's attention to details and in-depth thinking. Uh, she writes about, or either, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, it's written about the critical thinking. For creative, it's written that come up with new ideas and think different. So yes, absolutely. And we also absolutely. have yeah hand raised. We have hand raised, so you can just unmute okay. yourself, Roshan. Yeah, Roshan, you can come up. Yeah, namaste all. I'm Roshan Kumar from Sunshine Worldwide School, Goa. Namaste. Hello. You're most welcome namaste. here. Please share yeah. your thoughts. Yeah. See, uh, Madam. Creative thinking is now playing a very key role. Means our learners are. Now, suppose if you give any one bottle, for example, and tell the learners to do anything. So they are thinking beyond their limitations and trying to create a different, different things. Means one thing means different perceptions. They are creating their thinking and innovation. You can say it's an innovation. They are creating a new thing with the existing thing. And if you say the critical thinking uh, as a uh, I teach artificial intelligence also. So you can say it is a deep learning of the existing things. They are thinking in a, a very different manner, but the things are very like a deep learning. You can say critical thinking in a different way. Mm. Thank you. Very true and very pin, correctly pinned in Roshan. And I do agree with it because being a computer science and being a design teacher. Yes, we do agree that uh, when they are going for innovativeness, it's not important to dig out something new in this world. With your common you know examples your problems into your day-to-day -day life definitely innovativeness can be applied and they are doing the students are up to it and yes Linu, and Linu madam i am Linu madam i am also a computer science teacher in sunshine worldwide school oh great to meet you dear so true yeah. thank you <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Really, really wonderful insight. I don't know if you can see me past your screens, but I have been nodding throughout this whole session. And to continue, we would like to share our perception of the same. So absolutely following up on everything you have been writing into the chat box and what sir has been saying of course critical thinking is about an in-depth look into a studied concept be it in the primary stage or in a more advanced stage and critical thinkers as you can see on your screen just narrating for those who might be having issues use both types of thinking depending on the demands of the situation so these people 
really set logic as the main philosophy and the main point of their action. And the ideal for them is here to be lateralized in the thought processes, which means that basically you employ any type of cognition equally well. Creative thinkers. So Roshan sir has explained it in a very well way that creative thinkers are those which think from different perspectives and come up with lot of ideas who are able to leave behind perfectly logical answers that unfortunately are not solving the problems instead of trying to force fit a round solution, a kind of solution, they will think from different perspectives and such thinkers are willing to explore a different approach. Creative thinkers are kind of risk takers which think from different perspective. They will take a lot of initiatives and come up with a different ideas, whether that is correct or wrong. Absolutely. And I love this point that Ms. Divi is making about trying to force fit a round solution into a square problem. I think that since all of us here are design, teach, uh, design technology teachers, Everybody has this very well uh, developed creative thinking and imagination. So I think this formulation, this example really shows the, um, if you pardon this word, irritation that creative thinkers might have from such a situation. Thank you. Um, let's go to one more exercise. It will be a little bit more lengthy and a little bit more tricky. So the idea here is you can now see just a number of words written into something like one very long gibberish sentence. And this combination of letters that you see on your screen now represents actually a sentence from which we have removed a particular vowel. We won't tell you which one. That's your task to figure out what that vowel is and try to reinsert it um, 11 times. Not that that's extremely relevant or helpful in any way, you'll get the hang of it, but you need to reinsert this vowel and try to determine what this sentence is saying. So we will give you just a couple of minutes to do the same and you can type your answers in the chat box. Uh, even if you get some of the parts wrong or you try to figure out certain words and then certain parts of the sentence still paste that in the chat box because we're trying to prove a point now and in a second we will tell you what point we're trying to prove. And in fact, Delia, why not? Uh, we uh, teachers have to be learners, isn't it? Because we Absolutely. are consistent learners and more on uh, before, you know, our students learn that it, it's never any harm to try out. Same goes with us. So we have to be an exemplar for them and we have to keep trying. Let's quickly. It's very interesting. Even my brain has started working while she was explaining yeah. this activity. So I don't know. I don't know again. I'll also share my answer. Uh, but and believe me, she hasn't leaked out the answer to me. I don't know. The I, answer. Haven't. I haven't. Uh, so I haven't. Neither me nor Miss Divya shared the uh, exact answer. So only Miss Divya and I know that. And by the way, Miss Divya tested it on me. And <laughs> I'm just going to tell you in a second some of the surprises and discoveries yeah. I made. So. Yeah, Delia, there's already we have inside a very fine example and exceeds what we expect. I'll also say go and cross check what we tell our students. Go and cross check now. Are the 11 E's into it? Go and cross cross check from every aspect. Whatever we are putting in. Are we still there pitching in right? Please check. Absolutely. Revision Mr. is Young. needed before submission. <laughs> yeah, let's do the revision post submission. It's OK to do that. Exactly. Miss Divya, would you e like to have a look letter. at the yes. chat box? E yes, is the letter. Yes, ma'am. So we have a lot of responses oh. and they're writing that E is the letter. Some of them has also written very fine exemplar exceed what we expect. So very nice statements are coming from there. So almost they have guessed E most of the part of the statement. OK, Miss Divya, should we uh, open our cards and tell what yes. explain what's going on here okay yes ma'am please yeah, go Divya. ahead yeah so we are very happy to see your answers and almost everyone who has written in the chat box are able to find out that the word missing here is e definitely the word missing here is e but the first word that will come into your mind is very 
But here the first word is not very, it's every. So what we want to tell you here that when conviction and determination prevent us from exploring alternative options. So when we think from only one perspective, we are limited to a particular level. We limit our potential for thinking critically. So here, uh, though you have given the correct answers like fine, exemplar, needs, what we expect, all of them are correct. But the first word that is coming here is every. So that is the only concept that we want to discuss about, discuss with you that conviction and determination prevent us from exploring alternative options. Exactly, and well-developed critical and creative thinking skills actually help us and of course our students to get out of that loop of this stubborn even conviction and determination. And I'm sure that all of you can agree that as design teachers, the main and most important goal for us is to teach our students to be open-minded and think out of the box. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a little bit of theory, but don't think we will uh, be any easier on you. We still have a lot of interaction before us. We want this to be a collaborative session and find the truth and the perfect answer together collaboratively. So uh, in a second, Ms. Divya will be speaking a little bit about the four aspects of critical and creative thinking and how we join that and connect that to the four phases, to the four, just the general phases of design and of course course to our MYP design cycle. But an important thing we have to mention here is we are not going to be looking strictly and exclusively at the MYP design cycle for a very simple reason. Because the MYP design cycle is the basis. It's sort of the holy grail of the MYP design technology subject as it is. But then from there, as teachers, we are given the opportunity to find different systems and professionally related areas of knowledge, studies, research, and then layer that on top of the MYP design cycle. And today, what we're going to offer you is one of these layers, uh, a certain approach to uh, differentiating and developing these critical and creative things. So let's talk about the four aspects of critical and creative thinking skills and how they intersect with the phases of the design. So if you will see this figure, so the, the four aspects of critical and creative thinking skills here are idea generation that we are implementing in our design cycle and that is the first phase of our criteria a self-regulation we are going to talk about the self-regulation reflective judgment and attitudes and deposition in detail later on but these are the four aspects of critical and creative thinking skills in between, if you will see that has been written, that narrow focus, problem space, define, empathize, ideate, prototype, and test. So these are the phases of our design cycle, as all of you know about that. So we are going to talk about them in detail. We will focusing more on four aspects of crit critical and creative thinking skills and how they are intersecting with our phases of design in our MYP design cycle. And for the upcoming uh, 15, 20, if we're getting a lot of responses, maybe even 25 minutes, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing the four aspects of creative and critical thinking with their details, strands, and components and processes. And what we're going to be asking you to do is after each aspect that we discuss, and as you see the explained detailed components of each aspect, together we will try to analyze whether a specific strand refers to creative or critical thinking skills. This is a completely debatable area. There is no right or wrong answer. Let me just straight away state that. So we're going to try to get some perspective. And as we're going to be looking at these aspects, you will have the opportunity to, to, to choose three, five, maybe one or two components to make your point 
discuss the same and um, for this specific activity we will be interacting with the chat box and in the same way as in the previous activity raising your hand will indicate us that you would like to share your opinion and voice your thoughts and another thing you can also jot down these points on a piece of paper or into a word document because it is important to record the ideas that will be expressed by our colleagues and by the other participants uh, because later on that can give you some good help and advice and support in your own classroom. So we will here talk, uh, talk about the first uh, aspects of critical and creative thinking skill that is idea generation. So many of the problems our student will face in day to day life or in the real world have no predetermined solution. Idea generation is about coming up with unusual ideas, whether they are realistic or outlandish. Idea generation can be facilitated by working with new materials, meeting to different peoples, think from different perspective, brainstorming. The more ideas are developed in this phase, the more probable a unique, practical and effective solution will be found. As all of you know that we are talking here about the criteria A of our design cycle, which is brainstorming. If you will see here that we have used some of the strands of idea generation, so we have we are going to explain them in a detail. Exactly. So here you can see the explanation for this first uh, aspect. You can see so many different concepts and what we will ask you to do is, as I said, either raise your hand or write in the chat box. You can take a minute to familiarize yourselves with what is written on the screen. Try to choose one or a couple of these points and argue whether it's critical or creative thinking that is implied with each uh, of these points. For example, if we're speaking about brainstorming and we know, as Ms. Divya said, that this is the criteria A, inquiring and analyzing, uh, the reason we're showing this is because it gives you a little bit more steps than this, the design cycle. As I said, we're layering some more intense information here. So if we look at brainstorm, it is explained as define and record multiple solutions or ideas related to a topic. So what is this? Brainstorm. Is it a creative thinking skill, a critical thinking skill? For me personally, I would say that this falls into creative thinking skills for a very simple reason, because the process of brainstorming is a wonderful time in your activity, in the process of you designing something, creating something where you don't really know about the scope of things that have been created or have been expressed until a certain point, right? So you get the opportunity to look at things and search for them in so many different creative ways. And it is a creative process. At the same time, I can understand why someone might say that it will be critical thinking because um, people who, are, who tend to take a more logical approach would want to structurize the brainstorm and start kicking in that analytical point and that analytical side to it from the very beginning. So, Miss Lino, can you help us out? Do we have any answers in the chat box or raised yes. hands? Would anyone like to defend their point of view, please? Yes, we do have some answers in the chat box, but before that, we also have Mr. Roshan. Uh, do you want to share your idea, dear? Yes, Namaste. Uh, yeah, Madam, brain, brainstorm, you can say it is, a, as Madam, Madam said, that it is a creative thinking because in the brainstorm, we have a new ideas at their mm -hmm. own, and the going beyond out of box and thinking about the particular concept. You can say it's a creative, but if you say critical, if you have some topic that the analytical things comes over here, the learners can go into the deep and you can have a critical thinking if you have any topic. So you can say it is a brainstorming. You can say it is a creative thinking also as well as it is a critical thinking according to me. Madam. What I feel. Huh? 
Okay. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Would anybody like to address? You can either choose brainstorm or any other point from here because I feel that sir and I have been really kind of jumping onto brainstorm. Yes, uh, yes uh, I believe sir and I are fans of the brainstorming process. <laughs> Maybe we have someone who would like to share um, any other point or any other aspect. And yeah, in the answer. chat box, Delia, we have that. Um, 2, 8 and 11 is for critical thinking. We have Rishmi saying it's observe. OK. 2, 8 and 11 being in critical. So use a variety I, of methods the, to verbalize or represent ideas. 8 in elaborate and 11 in make remote associations. Wonderful. Good point. We also have for explore as a creative thinking. And absolutely. so many comes up. Good. Biona says and that it's. Uh, uh, yeah, and Miss Lino, if, if, examine, if I can just I feel also. Okay, I think we're having maybe a small um, internet connectivity issue. Sorry, just to jump in. A very important point when we speak about number three explore. And it is for a reason that we use the word play. I encourage everyone, if you have the time and the and you know the willing to explore this a little bit, I really recommend watching a TED talk by famous American designer Paula Scher, which is called Great Design is Serious, Not Solemn. And there Paula Scher speaks about the fact that the perfect uh, definition for design is serious play. And she goes on to make other points, and I'm sure you might find that interesting for those who, who would like, I would share this TED talk in the chat box at the end of the session. But absolutely, when we see the word play, play refers to the young child in us, to the creative thinker who would like to just have some fun and has no strict guidelines and has no predictions regarding the final point of where he would like to end up. Any um, more ideas and points? Yes, ma'am. So we have a lot of ideas. Uh, they are sharing about observe and elaborate. And it's been saying that it's critical thinking skill. So when we are talking about observe, monitor the things closely to identify details and processor. So I totally agree with them that it is a critical thinking skills because first of all, when we come to the solution or as there are already the existing products in the market, we have to analyze it very critically. And after that, we have to come up with the ideas. So that correctly saying that it is a critical thinking. Absolutely, absolutely. And you can uh, click a screenshot or jot down these points because sometimes as teachers, we sort of know all these points, but then when we get caught up in our teaching practices, we tend to forget the whole palette of opportunities and actions and activities that we have. So it can be a good idea to keep this uh, handy. And in our case, just to finalize this um, conversation on idea generation, the most important point that Ms. Divya and I, and kind of the conclusion and outcome that we have from idea generation is that unique ideas result and are effective when idea generation is explicitly separated from other activities. Because as you know, our students want to, you know, they're so quick. They live in a completely different speed than we do. And of course, for them, often idea generation straight away sticks with straight away going to create the solution, test the materials. It's very important. And that's again, we're returning to that conversation about environment to create an environment within the student, within his mindset and outside in the classroom, in the school in general for the student or for a group of students to actually engage in idea generation as a free separated activity. The second aspect we're speaking about is reflective judgment and things get sort of a bit more serious here because in reflective judgment, 
we kind of have this interesting border where some of the points still actually tend and can be interpreted in criteria A, in stage one, inquiring and analyzing, but also in stage B and mostly in stage B for uh, developing ideas. So when we speak about reflective judgment, uh, I like to say that this is the part where discipline kicks in because we cannot any longer just be carefree in our research, in our thoughts, in our ideas. From here on, reflective judgment is the point, is the starting point of the marathon which the student will be running to achieve the final point. So whereas idea generation can be slightly separated and it can end at that point, the point of reflective judgment is to work as a, as a starting uh, element which will then directly influence the final point. So let us look at some of these strands here. So uh, you can again select two or three of them and you can reflect on the same, whether that are critical or creative thinking. We will start with very first one, that is question. Ask question to help evaluate and judge information. Inquire to seek clarity and being process of analyzing and evaluating. As we are talking about asking questions, so when we are creating a project, first the question arises that why there is a need of creating the why we are creating this project, why there is a need of creating this project. What is the audience that we want to target? So that is the first part of our critical thinking skill in which we are analyzing each and everything very deeply and coming up with the solution that for which audience you want to create this project. Absolutely. So do we have any answers, entries, hands risen please feel free do we have miss lino or have we yes we um, do have okay. we do have. okay, okay. Uh, mr roshan is saying that question is a creative one and organize goes with the critical that's a point number three yeah Interesting point, and I think with the question, the debate on whether it will fall into critical or creative lies in the actual identification of the question itself. If we are at the process of asking whom would we like to create a certain, let's say, product for, yeah, sure, we can be creative because we can decide that our, our target audience will be a group of aliens from planet Mars who, you know, get extremely cold throughout the months of March to June. But then if we are actually going to take this to a serious level and start determining the best fit questions for, let's say, a survey, in this case, of course, the critical side will kick in. Yes, we also have Bruno saying that separate is a critical one. I completely agree because in the actual activity and in the process of separation for some students, actually, maybe you will agree with me. Um, separation can be an actually a very painful process because this is the part where kind of the idea generation memories are fresh and you want to take all your ideas into one project, which is physically impossible to do. So here you have to be very critical. And also what Ms. Divya and I like to tell our students, you have to switch on the critic within you and try to be very kind of sometimes even harsh in how you um, decide and cut off certain ideas. Yes, any and more I points on to yeah, just to share two points. One, uh, they go for critical thinking. I say interpret. They have chosen. Uh, there are few who have chosen that interpret as a critical mm -hmm. one, and there is hypothesize, which has been chosen as creative. Interesting. Would the person who chose hypothesize as creative like to defend the point of view? Maybe, sir or ma'am. I'm sorry, I can't see the screen. Yeah, it's Vida. Um, you would like to share, yeah. please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vera, would you like to unmute and share with you? Why do you go for it as creative? Yeah, hypothesis is something like which we need to think and then uh, you have to define it on your own. You're, uh, it's not available. We have to based on the facts that are available. We have to come up with this could be the reason or this may be the fact, something like that. 
so i feel it is uh, it needs some creative thinking very very interesting point um does anyone from the participants like to agree or disagree on the same that's it's just really genuinely interesting for me yes mr roshan please take on yeah uh, namaste all again uh, inter interpret means you can say uh, you are describing the things you are elaborating the things you are interpreting according to it so it can be a creative and mm -hmm. and operator means both the conditions should be true so and the critical it depends madam whether the learner is interpreting on what basis uh, it can be his or her own creativity interpretation as well as it is a critical also depend on the learners the way of like it is a factual or conceptual so whatever the thing so it can be both also but it depends on the uh, learners thinking process what thinking skills they are using for it according to me absolutely sir thank you so for nice. sharing just for one second to return also to what ma'am was saying about uh hypothesize ma'am the reason i'm i was questioning it because i often feel that people and teachers in general tend to structure and place hypothesize into critical thinking i on the contrary agree with you that it has more to deal with creative thinking for a very simple reason because when we say the word hypothesize even though it is of course a much more logical process we deal with fantasies and we deal with imagining and trying to predict something that hasn't happened yet and for that you really need imagination even if it's very logical even if you're having serious kind of paths and guidelines i completely agree with you that hypothesize is falling into creative thinking skills so true delia even i go with it yes even i do agree what you said absolutely yeah. let's move on let's take some of the examples from our our classes so here if you will see that we have used some of the pictures in which one one is related to the mind map so we allow our students to do the primary in the primary stage of our cycle they use the reflective judgment in the form of mind map in which they are discussing with each other and do the and give their reflections and add all their ideas in the form of mind map in brainstorming multiple ideas and put them in a mind map another one figure if you will see here that students are working with the arduino board with different wires in which they are thinking critically like whether we are uh, we can take this situation or not whether this situation is going to work for the uh, work for us or not so they are just playing with the wires whether we can connect it here or we can connect it somewhere here to come up to a particular solution absolutely and to just summarize this discussion on reflective judgment you can see here i would just like to stop on this thought for one second reflective judgment basically is a part of the design processes and the aspects of critical and creative thinking which really um explains the difference between design and visual art because many people think especially given the fact that with the world is full of designers and graphic designers they feel that there is a uh, like a mark of design equals or graphic design equals visual art when in real life it actually is not because the main distinction between them is the design always every single time even if we're speaking about graphic design has to solve a problem whereas visual art can completely you know dissolve in the point of creativity there is no this of course visual art can and a certain artist can set as a point to solve some kind of problem and narrate it but visual art always deals with primary expression and expression is the engine that drives an artist who is working in the field of visual art whereas a designer can be very creative and very artistic at the beginning but at the point of reflective judgment he becomes more of an engineer that's why when we ask uh if if you come like imagine a venn diagram a designer is the intersection point between an artist and an engineer 
So, now, oh yes, please, Miss Divya. Now let's come to the third aspects of critical and creative thinking skill, that is attitudes and deposition. This is one of the very important point because here we are uh, considering about the ambiguity. So the ability to tolerate ambiguity, consider other other perspectives and avoid implicitity are all key skills related to this aspect of critical and creative thinking. So as uh, what we are doing in our classes, we are doing the peer evaluation in which students are giving their feedback to each other. That is one of the perspective, but the other thing is they have to take it in a very positive manner. Otherwise it will, they are not able to implement their solution in a very good way. So that is attitude and deposition, and we will explain it in detail now. Again, you have to write down your points uh, in the chat box that which of the point do you think is critical and which one is the creative? And while you do that, just to share an opinion and uh, feel free to agree or disagree, but I think that attitudes and disposition might be the most important part for our current young generation of uh, students for a very simple reason. I'm sure that many of you can relate to a situation when if you ask a student to look at another student's work and you ask that student, please reflect, please analyze, give like evaluate this product of your peer, of your classmate. Explain me why it is good. I'm sure that many of you would hear an answer which goes something like that. Well, it's good because it's cool. Or I mean, well, it's, it's just it's just good because I like it. So the problem here is that our current generation, uh, it's not bad or a good thing, it's just something that we have to work with, uh, is so attached to the like and dislike system that like starts to equal good and dislike starts to equal bad. That's why it's very important when you're working and we're moving here to stages uh, B and C of the design cycle and actually grabbing a little bit from the evaluation, which is uh, criteria D, it's very important to teach our students in terms of creative and critical thinking from the perspective of this generating attitudes and dispositions. So I'm sorry that I've been speaking for such a long time. Please let us hear some points of views on the strands that you are now seeing on your screen. This is actually a tricky point. Yes, ma'am. So we are receiving the responses. So one of the responses again from Roshan, sir, that is it. Judge assumption is a critical thinking. So do you want to say something about you uh, about the same that why you have selected it as a critical thinking? Madam, namaste all again. Uh, judge assumptions. Assumptions we can say in our computer language also, we always tell the learners to do the assumptions, do the logic, use the assumptions and do the programming things. But judge assumption means you are judging means uh, you have something you have something on that basis mm. you are doing your assumptions you are doing your assumptions mean the things are existing the things are existing and on, on that basis you are doing means you are doing a critical thinking if the things are not there to something to assume then it becomes a creative of your open mindedness go beyond out of box and create anything but here we are judge assumption on the basis of some uh, some object or some information some identity what is the anti some entity so according to me it's a critical thinking or based on experience means it is already passed so we have something to some object on that basis we are doing a uh, critical thinking on this basis i said madam what i feel absolutely sir absolutely any more answers miss divya any points anyone would like to share their thoughts uh yes ma'am so we yes. have this safe... yes lena ma'am please no no continue divya continue there are a few more, more yes so mm -hmm. we have received some few more responses. The sixth one, reject stereotypes and prejudice. So mom is saying that it is critical thinking. So mom, mm -hmm. would you like to explain it a little bit that why do you think that it is critical thinking? 
so namaste, namaste. Uh, namaste. yeah uh, so uh, i think that is critical thinking because when we are actually thinking about a scenario by uh, by not uh, referring to the assumptions and we are trying to come up with the justification then we are uh, utilizing our critical thinking to come up with the uh, the evidences required to justify our statement i totally Wonderful. agree with you ma'am that it is critical thinker and the way you have explained it justified the statement definitely and uh, dear colleagues please continue to post your points but i wanted to say that uh, in from my kind of perspective actually when we're speaking about attitudes and disposition the interesting thing here is of course the tendency there is more towards critical thinking naturally because it it's it's a paradox uh, in this point students are dealing a lot with their emotions but again returning to the dialogue of designers being more engineers we have to critically decide what we're going with and what we're not we have to critically identify our emotions but any time when in the learning process and in ib specifically we're speaking about any aspect of learning that has to deal with strong emotions and i'm sure that you agree i mean these things avoid impulsivity tolerate ambiguity remain sensitive persist i mean these are things that not many adults can do in conference rooms when we're speaking about the attitudes and disposition we always imply the practice of effective skills and effective skills is a very very important area of development and attention for us as design teachers because again we might tend to get a little overly critical and a little overly engineery because at the end of the day what we need is a working solution we cannot afford a solution that will be failing us so it is especially important for us to take the time and even design certain lessons which would treat the effective skills and the mindful and emotion side of our students and for that reason ms divya and i find that peer evaluation is a wonderful activity because on the one hand you have the students who are practicing their critical and creative things in conjunction to attitudes and disposition but at the same time you suddenly transfer from an exclusively design teacher into a moderator who is also a counselor and a psychologist and who can have a look from the side from a different perspective on the human emotional interaction and emotional level and level of charge that your students are acting towards one another um Ms. Delia, yes please sorry please, to interrupt please. you in between dear uh, there is one participant um veera machani and uh, I, i'll just request kusuma kusuma over here if you can just inform him that uh, or her, i'm not very sure so if you want uh, them to enter the session uh, we are trying hard but none of our it teams are also able to do that because when we are putting admitting over there then uh, it's uh, keep on going 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 it's not admitting him but other participants are able to enter uh, beside that so just try and tell him that you know if they can enter with some other id if they can try with that using the same link because okay. this id is not working probably yeah okay, okay. you can take on uh, thank, you. thank you thank you so much yeah uh, right. carry on then you Mm -hmm. uh, so moving on, the last aspect of um, the critical and creative thinking cycle is self-regulation. And in self-regulation, what we do is basically this is the ending process. Of course, this falls majorly into the criteria D, evaluating. And we're going to try and speak a little bit about the same. Yes, uh, everyone. So now again, you can share your ideas with us, whether it is critical or creative thinking skills. And interestingly enough, uh, it's funny how this point, how self-regulation, though it has this serious word regulation in it, is actually quite different, if not even opposite to the attitudes and disposition that we have been speaking about, right? Because if we're speaking about performance, focusing, progress, we can really see that it can go both ways.
for critical and creative thinking. So colleagues, please share your thoughts, your ideas on the same before we also sum up and share our thoughts on the same. Yes, you can again use the same chat box. You can share your thoughts with microphone. You please raise your hand. We can let you in. Yeah. You can also so, raise your hand. I think so. Yes. We have received one of the response that is uh, second number two. Assess knowledge is a critical, critical mm -hmm. thinking. Absolutely, absolutely, because it doesn't really have any room for biased opinion, right, or for going one way or another. Generally, assessing the knowledge is an evaluation what, which of what is either there or is not, so I agree. But at the same time, if we're looking at evaluating the process, or even, funnily enough, evaluating the product, we come into a bit of an interesting situation because when we evaluate the process, uh, of course we can be critical in thinking about how a certain stage was effective or not. But when we use the word process, the most important thing, regardless of the subject or the area or the tone of our um, activity, process, always has to deal with experience and the process of getting experience is a very creative one don't you agree even if it is completely kind of uh, combined of critical elements the process of learning that's what we started off with right and getting to know something is always a very creative one so you also have some other responses yes Divya you can take on these are there a few more over there so one uh, one of the response uh, from ma'am is 10, 11, 10, 12. That is cognitive risk uh, restructing. Evaluate the process and evaluate mm -hmm. the product are critical thinking. So I totally agree with you, ma'am, that evaluate the process in which we are talking about determine whether the processes used to generate result are in line with initial goals or not. So it is definitely it's a critical thinking because we are talking about our final goals, whether we are able to achieve them or not. And yes, ma'am, please. Please, please, Miss Divya. Others, so you can keep on sharing in the chat box. Yeah, if, uh, they are moving on, but it's all open to you. You can keep on sharing in the chat box. It's good to see your responses. So it's very important. Now we want to discuss one of the aspects of uh, the same. That is the process general. So as all of you know that self-regulation basically means we know each and every step that we are doing in our project. So it's very important to create a process journal so that when we go back to the previous stages, we will be able to find out that what we have done in the previous stages. And according to that, we will design our solution. So here is one of the example that we have taken from one of the class of MYP2. And uh, we want to share a small video with all of you. So when we are talking about process journal, we are not saying that it's all about just noting down the idea, the processes that you have done. You can create it in a very creative way. Either you can use uh, the piece of paper or a notebook to, to note down each and everything. You, they can use, they can use, uh, Let's say PowerPoint presentation, they can use Sway, they can use, they can also create a video. So here we want to show a small video created by one of our students. Uh, I'm just going to keep a little bit of music because the student actually made the effort to create uh, the music. So it's embedded into the process journal. I'm just going to switch it off so that it isn't disrupting what we're saying. Uh, let's be honest, a process journal could be a very boring thing. Because basically what we need to do is we need to record things, we need to sketch things. I mean, it's, it's a very tedious process. And what Ms. Divya and I are doing, and we're making this a very serious pro point, and not only Ms. Divya, all of our colleagues from the department, we are doing everything to encourage our students to take the creative curve for the process journal. And here you can see that the student has actually made a wonderful interactive unit element and at the end of the day it's much more fun to fill in something that looks like that rather than 
a simple Word document. Again, nothing being wrong with a Word document. And we have students who adore this kind of very methodical, very uh, unified, structured approach. But we just wanted to share a different point of view on how things can be done. And at the end of the day, we try to explain our students that the process a journal can definitely be your diary and we always encourage our students to write things not only from the perspective of we had a wonderful class we have wonderful teachers this is an effective activity but actually point out the things that might go wrong and we encourage you to do the same because at the end of the day this can be an amazing uh, area of feedback for you as teachers as well. Please, Ms. Divya. Yes, ma'am. Can you please move to the next slide? Yes, definitely. Now let's start with the small practice. So here we are going to share some of our personal tips about why we think our classroom is effective. So we will share our own ideas and we we want everyone to share your ideas so that we will uh, we will come up with a lot of ideas and share it with each other so that we can also implement in our classes all. Right, so um, Ms. Divya, sorry, I lost you for one second. Uh, some of our personal tips are, first of all, of course, we are in pair teaching. So the way Ms. Divya and I are conducting the seminar is pretty much the way we conduct our classes. And if your school has the resources for pair teaching, this can be a really good initiative to look into. Because what it does, it gives the students an understanding that the actual brainstorm process of design is also supported by the different perspectives and different approaches of two different teachers. And in our case, we're also extremely lucky because I represent the product side of design and Ms. Divya represents the digital side of design. So this way we can actually with absolute seriousness, sincerely ask questions. And we are in the position where, for example, if I am uncertain about certain areas, certain super professional and advanced areas of digital design, I can always kind of take the side of the student and ask questions from the perspective of a person who isn't extremely advanced in something and vice versa. Differentiation. So apart from implementing a combined product and digital design, as ma'am has already explained you that we are implementing both product design as well as digital design. We pay a lot of attention to differentiation by content, processes, product, interest and learner profile, etc. So I just want to give you a small example uh, with the help of a project that we are doing in our MYP2 which is uh, creating a website. So in which students have created a website, but we have used the concept of differentiation there. Some of them are very good with the technical skills, so they can write their code. They can implement the same thing each and every year, and they can create a website. In the same way, we have some students who are technically, te technically not very strong. So what we have done here, we allow them to use a template. Some of them have used a template in which they have done the changes, and some of them has really done the coding in the same. So for inquiry based, this is the third kind of tip. Of course, you know, as NYP school that the classrooms have to be student centered and inquiry based, and that's what we have. But I would like to say that many teachers often and many, especially beginner MYP schools, young schools which are implementing the IB curricula, they seem to stumble on a very interesting challenge. They have the teachers and they have amazing teachers 
who are extreme professionals and who have 20 years of teaching experience, but for some reason, their design classes are just not MYP design classes. And an interesting thing happened when I joined Genesis School. I came into this amazing team of which Ms. Divya was also part of, and these were and still are super professionals who know their subject inside out and who actually have established an amazing connection with the students. All it took for us to actually become a full on MYP design class in the true sense of it was having two teachers from the MYP program join um, the design department, myself included. An interesting thing happened. We realized that the perspectives and the approaches that we as MYP teachers were sharing were actually very familiar and those were strategies which our teachers, our team used. The only difference was they were used as a side activity rather as the main activity. So a small tip if you're just a beginner MYP teacher, you really want to see that your classes are inquiry based, that you have no lecturing going on and that you vary the platforms which you use for students to work on, for them to explore new things and you don't feel intimidated or overwhelmed if you pass on control to the students. Because if you are a good teacher and if you're a qualified teacher, you will never lose the control of the classroom. Amazing department. That is one of the points that is more attractive in all of them. Amazing department. So we have amazing department in which we have from different, different parts. Let's say from design, digital design, from product design, graphic design. So what we will do, we always share our ideas with each other. We design our classes. We, uh, we work with our lesson plannings together and come up with a lot of ideas. We we share our ideas with each other and take everything in a positive manner. And in this way, we are working as a as a design teacher and we are implementing a lot of strategies in our classes. And this brings us to the custom curricula, the last tip from from this batch, uh, because the thing is, because we have uh, professionals who are qualified in very different areas from game design to architectural design to book design to incredible digital design on so many different platforms, we have the opportunity of actually constructing a custom curricula, which of course meets the general points of uh, the MYP cycle and of the things that need to be covered. But we make it a point never to repeat the tasks from year to year. Sure, if we are deciding that we're doing game design with an MYP one in the first term, we are likely to keep that. But a small advice here, shuffle things up and try to sit down and use the construction of a curricula as a creative process. Try to imagine incredible things, try to achieve the inachievable, and um, I guarantee you the response from your students will be amazing. Now let's talk about the stages of the design uh, cycle to develop critical and creative thing. So uh, as you go to the first part in which we have just started our uh, session. So this is the figure that we have used where we were talking about first of all the four aspects of critical and creative thinking skills. Now we are focusing on the phases of design and how they intersect with each other. So if you will see this figure, the points here in the our design cycle is empathize, define, ideate, come up with the multiple ideas, prototype in which our students are going to create multiple prototypes and do the testing of the same. And seeing that we are a little bit short on time, what we would like to do is very quickly, Ms. Devi and I would just like to share some examples and some approaches from these phases of design with specific tasks and activities which we perform. And at the end of discussing every single point, every single phase, we encourage you to try and share the same from your end. Uh, this is not extremely compulsory and not to try and see what the others are doing, but just because, especially if you are starting as an MYP design teacher, uh, 
it's hard to tell whether an activity is an MYP activity or a non-MYP activity. And straight away, spoiler alert, there is no such thing as a non-MYP activity, but there is such a thing as a non-MYP approach. So when we're looking at the first phase, which is focusing, uh, we're finding meaningful, relevant problems to solve. We're asking how might we. Let's deconstruct this how might we. What does that mean? When we speak about the how, these are the solutions that exist. They already are there. And all we need to do is figure out what these solutions are. When we're speaking about the might, as is written here, the ideas that we have discussed are simply ideas. Some of them will work and will turn into these beautiful solutions and some won't and that's fine. So the might point is exactly the, the word that refers to the play in the definition of design. There is no judgment passed and there should not be any judgment passed on the validity of the idea which we are tossing out. And this is the first step of ensuring that your classroom is an MYP classroom. You do not judge even though you are a teacher. You are there to eavesdrop, to support, to guide, to lead, but never to judge. And last but not least, we. The design class really has to become a community, a team which will help you and support you when you are together and help you come up with better, more creative solutions. And it's always helpful when we have the perspectives. At the same time, as a teacher, your very, very difficult and important role is to ensure that this support and these perspectives are expressed in a very safe way. And when we're doing the focusing, we love mind maps, but what we do is we rarely do them as individual activities. So it's always a team activity, sometimes for the whole class at the same time. As teachers, we have our apps displayed and shared on our screens and we just start collecting these ideas and you will be surprised at how wonderful this task and this activity is actually uh, when we're looking for an icebreaker activity. We have had many students who had been mute for several months in a row who started speaking out when they saw that we are generating a collective mind map. empathize which basically means identify the target audience so when we are doing some project first of all we have to find out that which audience we want to target for which audience we are creating our project observe interact ask questions so we have to interact with a lot of the people for whom we are creating the project so that we come up with the points like what features we have to add in our project understand their perspective so we have to think from their perspective and then come up with the different ideas. So here we have taken some of the example in which we are just showing some of the pictures. If you will see that is a survey form. So we have created a lot of surveys uh, within the classes. We have used the software, let's say Microsoft, as well as we have used the Google form. So here are some of the examples of our students in which they have created the questions and they have sent it across each and everyone to share their ideas so that they find out the solution for the same that what they have to create. So colleagues, if you would like to share some examples of activities which you think enhance and help develop this phase of design, empathize, please do. You can write in the chat box or you can raise your hand. The only one point I'm going to leave you with, you know, in terms of empathize is I'm sure that all of you are hearing about this new course towards empathetic design. And empathy is a very, very important part of the design, especially nowadays when we need to be mindful when we need to be very caring and careful with the things we design and the ideas we express and generate. So we always use the survey form as an opportunity for the students to ask meaningful questions, not just for the sake of stating, you know, things and trying to do a very kind of superficial um, research, but really trying to understand your audience and show even with the questions, with the rightly answered questions that they care. So please, Ms. Lina, do we have any raised hands or any answers in the chat box? Yeah, uh, we do not have any raise hands, but we do have one answer that uh, we can have MCQs going on. Yes, we do can have MCQs. We also go for questionnaires 
that's a good point anybody who also want to share with us uh, you know uh, you can just raise your hand i'll uh, be taking your name to share in uh, okay by the time you are just uh, brainstorming and thinking about it uh, miss delia it's just uh, as an inquisitive you know uh, idea coming in my mind um what if about uh, is it related to something sustainability too because of that we have to be you know it's uh, the empathetic uh, feature comes comes into picture that uh, now a time when we are asking a students to develop anything we always ask them to think into the sustainability goals too because we have absolutely. to sustain ourselves right absolutely miss lena that's a great point and colleagues if you would like to share any examples of sustainable design or uh, sustainable ideas which you and your students have been exploring please feel free to come forward with your answers i agree completely miss lena and sustainability has been an uncommonly long lasting trend in the world and in design mm -hmm. specifically yeah we also uh, yeah we have mr roshan yes mr roshan you can unmute yourself yeah namaste all uh, madam uh, in today's any curricula or any lesson plan we do we normally include all the sdgs keeping in mind that is sustainable development goals anyhow yeah. like yeah so we implement some imported uh, sdsgs uh, to have some impact on our lesson plan so there is a sustainability we have to be like included and what will be the outcome through that particular goals in education so we do include in our uh, lesson plans the sdgs all 17 but not all 17 but which is related to mostly to the education at least Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure that our colleagues and participants will find this a very valuable suggestion. And another point here: don't forget that uh, the empathising part is something which um, aligns perfectly with service as action. So, if you are looking into any interdisciplinary activities, or SAA is constructing a series of activities, and you would like to contribute to them as a design teacher with your team of design students, that can also be a wonderful way to enhance this phase. Now, when we're speaking of ideating, basically we speak a lot about sketching and Ms. Divya and I always repeat uh, to our students if we're saying the word sketching this doesn't necessarily mean drawing because the process of sketching and the whole department uh, we attended an amazing seminar on design thinking where the speaker um, explained that sketching isn't activity it's rather a state of mind uh, where you in which you kind of dive when you're working on generating some certain ideas and ideas so we generate these multiple ideas for potential solutions. We ask questions like what if? And as Ms. Divya also mentioned earlier, outlandish ideas are always, always welcome. So here we have just uh, made a compilation of images and we uh, were actually very mindful and we were determined not to show only perfect designs and amazing examples because the process of sketching can be messy it can be unprofessional and it can happen on any plane actually be it a piece of paper uh, a small scrap a napkin that's what's best about it this is kind of a process i'm sure many of you know when we're in a stressful situation and when we're speaking on the phone we're kind of many of us take a pen and start drawing something so this process of sketching and channeling the uh, brainstorming idea into the process of drawing something is actually within us it calms us down so some examples again with our self-watering planters analyzing you can see that these sketches they really are rough but there's nothing wrong with that at the end of the day this is just one of the approaches to understanding a certain idea and getting to the bottom of the right um, idea and the working solution. So um, any ideas for the ideate? How do you develop uh, sketching skills, uh, brainstorming skills? How do you ideate with uh, your students in your team, in your classroom? So Rahul sir has shared one of the idea. Rahul sir, do you want to tell us a little bit about the same that what you are using, how you are using it in our uh, your school? In fact, he has used a new uh, term. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. 
carry on carry on actually uh, related to what you discussed yeah uh, yeah good uh, good evening yeah uh, this is actually related to what we were discussing in the earlier part uh, like nowadays when we talk about the sustainable uh, we look at many things uh, you know they are on the top of our list and uh, one of the things of the mind is that uh, since the resources are limited and our needs you know uh, are continuing to increase and we're finding new new ways of course a lot of innovations are happening so the consumption is increasing day by day uh, but as we are consuming uh, we are uh, you know destroying the lot of resources, lot of mm-hmm. you know uh, nature uh, and so to look at that we you know uh, see that where our existence on this planet should be uh, instead of increasing our demand or uh, you know what we need to live we need to uh, bring down those uh, in a daily life like our consumption has to go down otherwise uh, the planet will not be able to that's a discussion we keep on happening and we see uh, how we in a daily life we can do that you know uh, uh, like maybe uh, we, it's a very normal thing we keep on talking about car pooling and all mm-hmm. all Uh, where we are actually, you know, helping each other and getting to our schools, and then not, not or not doing certain things, not uh, you know, utilizing the uh, resources. Suppose I want to buy, I reduce my consumption so that the resources uh, in the environment or not consume, you know, as much as they will be. If I so I, at the personal level, uh, what we need to do, you know, otherwise, and today, of course, there was a big disaster. Uh, you know, our need for electricity. Uh, glacier melting away and taking away so all those things are discussed every day on how you know our requirements are need building those dams uh, and then you know then that, that leading to global warming and the glaciers melting away right now they uh, so the entire area is flooded a lot of destruction has happened because our needs uh, have a period of time and we need more and more and more resources to be consumed so if you bring down that uh, you know that resource consumption uh, then uh, maybe uh, we and environment can be uh, in sync and we may be survive for a longer time uh sir i would like you to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving us this reality check especially at this stage and at this specific phase of the process for a very simple reason because ideation well like first of all it's an amazing thing that what you do is you bring design into the real life so this is basically what the ib is proud of that we constantly with our lessons answer the student's question on how will i need this uh in my daily life so the fact that you're having this conversation of practices and ideas and topics being applicable to daily life and um, and vice versa inviting daily life issues into the subject of design this is an amazing attitude and approach but moreover when we're speaking about ideating we cannot have this critical process without being in sync of reality otherwise it will be complete fantasy and creativity so again returning to the fact that designers always have to solve a problem they always have to come up with a solution ideation thank you miss thanks to mr raul for for reminding us that and kind of recapping that cannot happen without a reality check so now let's talk about prototype and testing as we all of us know that it is the last phases of our design cycle creating the solution and evaluation so when we are talking about the prototype we have taken some of the example if you will see the figure uh, in front of the same so here the student has created a sustainable house with the help of a software that is a google sketchup so they have just created the prototype by coming up with different ideas by taking the feedback from the from their surveys and they come up to their final solution and uh, mr divya i'm really sorry to interrupt for just one second um a lot of teachers have come to me in the past saying you know i want to explore a certain platform for example or a certain serv- uh, um software with my students but i'm afraid they cannot handle that you know they will be too difficult this sketch was created by a person who didn't even know what google sketchup is and what 3d modeling is so in the span of just a term uh she managed to come up with these things so it's always it's okay if they fail 
with a certain um, software, but never be too afraid to try out something challenging because at the end of the day, our students, and again, this generation is extremely design intuitive. So here again, some of the ideas. So they have created the brochure. So with our MYP2, we were working on the website in which they are creating it for the healthcare. So they have created some of the brochures and logo design. As you have already seen some of the rough sketches in IT8 part in which they have created first of all the rough sketches of the same and then they come up with the ideas to their final design through Canva. So here you can see multiple examples of uh, animation uh, you will see here the students have created a robot uh, with the help of google sketchup some of them have created the uh, logos with the help of canvas some of them are yes some of yes so ma'am is highlighting all the points and here is one of the very impo uh, very interesting fact the student has created a board game as we were talking about the differentiation earlier so what we have done uh, it is very much related to the differentiation so this is one of the project of myp1 where we were talking about the alien friend so their final product was creating uh, the alien friend either through the animation or they can create any kind of the board game so this student yes so if you will see these of the figures they have created the prototype first some of them have created then converted it in the form of animation. Some of them have taken some of the uh, some of the things that already at their home and they have created the game. So this is one of the example of our student who has created the game with the help of uh, with the help of the raw material that already and, at their house. Uh, Ms. Divya, just to, uh, to add on here, the thing is that we were majorly focusing with these students on the software for animation and on digital things. But when the student, came, and we always had the option of a board game, but when the student came to us and he said, you know, I adore animation, but I really want to explore some offline things because I'm tired of being in constant online and constant digital mode, there wasn't even a question of, whether we let him or not because of course we appreciated him coming forward and being so mindful again practicing effective skills so this is one of the website created by our student as we told you earlier also that we have not restricted our students to do the coding so he has taken a template so he has worked on the wix in which he has created a website related to the healthcare Now let's come to this one. Again, this is an example taken from MYP3 in which we were working about the sustainable houses. So as you have earlier seen some of the design of the sustainable houses in ideate mode, they have converted it in the form of prototype in which they have used a Google Sketcher, whereas they have used different other software for the interior part. So only uh, right now you can see here the front part, the views uh, front as well as the back part, each and everything very perfectly. They have also created the interior, but we have not uh, added the interior part, but definitely whenever we are going to host next of the session, we will definitely going to add such kind of things. Exactly. And before we take your thoughts, your suggestions, your examples, I wanted to say that we were very proud with this task because it wasn't just about, you know, um, learning Google's Sketchup and then creating a house. We actually had a very strong um, ideology under that because the task was that the students had to pick any region in India which was prone to some sort of cataclysm. And then based on that, the sustainable house had to have features that would save or use even these uh, cataclysms. So again, when you're giving that reality check, which Mr. Raul was speaking about just earlier, this gives your students a sense of creating an important relevant solution, not just something which is abstract to develop their technical skills, but actually which once again answers the questions, how am I going to apply these skills in real life? So colleagues, any um, ideas to share, examples to share, share for how you deal with prototyping, testing for some of the final products maybe that your students have created? Ms. Lina, do we have some answers yes. in the chat box? Yeah. Uh, not yet, but we are open to 
anybody who wishes to share, you can just uh, raise your hand and uh, I'll take your name. And in fact, if I just go with what uh, they have been sharing, I, I'm part of, you know, see how students create all this and how they are ready to brainstorm with us. We just need to hold their hand and they're ready to take that journey with us. So yes, uh, yes, let suggestions some uh, some of your uh, how do you implement how what is your experience let's share that can we have um, anybody uh you know would you like to share with us you can okay. continue uh, we are you receiving some uh, sort of appreciation in the chat box like uh, it's a wonderful work by the students and yes, thank you so much. Yes, they yeah, they do deserve that. Yeah, they have please been free. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the chat box. We would gladly come back to them, comment on them. And um, this is actually about it for us today. Uh, we hope that we were able to showcase the connection between critical and creative thinking for uh, towards the design cycle, how we implement, what are the activities that you can use. Um, you now see the link, uh, QR code or link provided by Miss Lena in the chat box for our survey, so you can go through it. Miss Divya and I am just are going to sum up, say a couple of words, and of course, if you have any questions or answers, we would be happy to answer them, brainstorm some solutions together and your surveys help us actually improve our practices so please um, feel free to give us any suggestions and be honest about how you found okay uh, uh delia we have bruno uh he, it's being mentioned in the chat box that he um, was unable to unmute please carry on you can unmute yes, yourself please. now yeah please are you able to do it now Yes, sir. Uh, actually, uh, in the final phase, we can go with the uh, our feedback session, self evaluation. Uh, 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 please continue. You were saying something? It's Renny, you, I think uh, you were saying something, right? Hello. Yeah. Oh, it's Vishnu. Yes, Vishnu. Please carry on. Uh, ma'am, actually, uh, uh, for the final evaluation, we can do the uh, we, uh, we can take uh, do a self evaluation, or uh, we can do a uh, feedback from the target audience, or else uh, we can compare it with the success criterion to evaluate how successful our final product is. Absolutely. So I agree completely, and this kind of um, what you're speaking about is very, very important because when we return to the starting objectives, to the starting criteria, to our plans and compare the outcome with the plans, what happens is in this activity, we actually relink um, the cycle. So we turn the cycle into a cycle. We make we make it a continuous uh, process. So what you're speaking about is a very important, I would even say crucial part in the sort of ending. The end is a new beginning. There is no end to the design cycle because as we compare and as we take our outcomes and decide to just kind of critically evaluate our work, just as you said, this kind of is a new motivation for us to make another loop and then another and another and another and then just have it as an endless process. So I completely agree with you. Yes, and we again request you that the form link is already available in the chat box. So it's valuable for us. Please do share your thoughts do give your reflections so that we can come up with, you know, any more ideas, any more sessions with you. Uh, Winnie, do you wish to share something? Yes, yes. First of all, I would like to thank you for conducting this wonderful session. Thank and you. Then, uh, just a thought, um, maybe in future, if you plan for more sessions, relating uh, design to uh, service is one thing which I'm looking forward for. 
uh, i'm pretty new to mvp i would say so yeah. i'm looking forward for a session on like how do you relate uh, mvp design with service and action part so if you can do something like that it would be really grateful definitely ma'am absolutely and that's actually a very interesting area uh, which if i may say so isn't even limited to a single um, session because we as teachers actually we have these PD sessions which are conducted weekly by our school and we actually had our services action advisor work with us as teachers explain the points of intersection and currently we're also working on interdisciplinary units so actually regardless of whether you are a young MYP school and a young MYP teacher or you are an experienced one it's all always a, it's an ongoing conversation so i've jotted down that that point and i will definitely pass it on to the uh system which decides and kind of constructs these um uh these seminars and this is a very interesting topic so we would gladly come up with something on the same thank you for your suggestion miss divya you. any any thank final you. words because i i feel that i've stolen the <laughs> the run away from you <laughs> No, ma'am. Uh, I think so. Uh, they have given a lot of feedback to us with a lot of ideas. They have participated a lot in the chat box. They have written a lot of ideas. So thank you everyone for joining the session with us. And yeah. we hope in future also you will join with us whenever we are going to take up a new session. Roshan sir has raised the hand. Uh, I think so he, he wants yes, to say yes. something. Yes, sir, please. Yeah, Namaste. Really, truly speaking, from this very interactive, very informative session, uh, means we have interacted, we gain something. So we today we become our learners. We are also learners one of the times, creative. We are creating and we are doing critical thinking also. So thanks a lot for today a very interactive and informative session on the critical and the exercise was wonderful. Like Thank you. there, Thank you. there we have to critically thinking and actually the creative thinking is happening in live session simple as mr Roshan, <laughs> and i thank you so much for being so active and so yeah. kind of willing yes. to join in everything you know thank you so much sir uh, for your yeah, my kind pleasure my pleasure madam my pleasure. thank you sir and we also have miss vardui who is our ib principal and the heart and soul and i would even say the mind and the system of the genesis uh teaching uh, excellence uh, or system miss vardui maybe a couple of words closing in we we have actually lagged this for a very long time but we thank we you very much Ms. Dalia. thank you so much um actually because this is uh coming to be the last workshop the last session that we have in this series uh first of all thank you for participating so actively some of the names i have seen in all other sessions as well so it's kind of becoming a community where we together learn discuss and most hopefully the benefit would be our students. This is our only goal whenever we are doing anything. It's of course a professional development, a growth for ourselves, be it we in the position of leading the session or participating. It's equally a great learning process. But at the end of the day, we should ensure that this transfers into our own classrooms and impacts our growing generation and our hope for the future to have a better world we are creating through this kind of session so thank you everyone and hope this journey is just starting at this point and would continue having a long way in the future thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you thank, thank you for your yeah so thank you everybody for sh giving your precious time to us today uh, in india we have a week off and still you all are there with us and you know other places too so thank you so much for being good learners today and participating from the heart from full with full spirit you know it was so good to see that you were sharing your thoughts in the chat box though we moved on but still you were brainstorming and reflecting on what was going on so it was so nice to have all of you wonderful learners and uh, as ma'am said and as we all agree that you know teachers our teachers when learners exactly the Life first part. attribute a teacher should have is learner, right so we all have to be a learner and that's what we proved today so very good keep going with the same spirit we'll come up 
with some more series of these kind of sessions very soon. We'll let and thank you so much for joining us. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good afternoon, evening, actually. It's afternoon in, in Russia, but evening in India. So yeah. um, if you have any questions, post this session. You have our contact information. You can always uh, just mail us because another very important part, as Ms. Vardui said for us, is to build this community. And I feel uh, when I was just starting my journey as, a, as an IB teacher, I felt that the best connections and the best professional friendships with those with the subject teachers in my same group because of course as big departments and as the general as a school in general together we can solve a lot of the problems but sometimes you just need a person who gets it to the core of your subject so feel free to contact us we will be happy co to collaborate to communicate and have a wonderful wonderful evening uh, hi uh, actually it's i good. do not have any of the contact details so it would be really I'm great posting it. i'm posting in the chat box right oh. now for you okay, okay. Ms. Delia, she is also the myp coordinator for us so uh, just post her email id in the chat box uh, sure, sure. thank you thank you so much uh, Ma'am, Miss Venny, if you can just partake in the survey and leave your email there, and we will get back to you individually um, just to share our ideas and practices. Yeah, sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ma'am. Apologies. So once again, thank you, everyone, and we are looking forward so to much. make this a tradition. Please uh, do not forget to fill, fill the reflection form. It's already there in the link. It's provided in the chat box. So just uh, before leaving, just give us a few more minutes and you can just complete and it, it won't take longer. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for filling the reflection form. Yes, thank you. If you finalize the reflection form, you may leave and proceed with what is uh, the leftovers of a wonderful weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Reflection is done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Okay, Mr. Sunny, if you can just end our meeting from your point, because I think you're the only one with the authorized rights for the same. Yes, yes, I can do. Yes. Thank so you. I'm ending the meeting. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sunny. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Bye.